Okay then, take two. Welcome, good day, Sunday the 27th of June. I am uh, just going to share this on um, a few platforms if you bear with me. Okay, yeah, and um, I'm going to see if I can share India as well. Give me some moments. And let me share. A little bit. Thank you for joining. Hope you are well. All is good. We'll have a chat afterwards. A little bit of an update for you. Regards to the title of the video there. Can't type. Uh, I'm not feeling very strong today. Yeah, that's one done. Right, right there. I have two accounts when I guess I just logged in with Indie Glow and it failed miserably. A wee bit to say the least. Been some time since we've used this, so notice we've been using the other media platform. So get into girlspro.com, Facebook, and Telegram, and we shall begin. And I will screen share. We shall begin. Thank you for your patience. Data opt out GP and doctors, Data Protection Act 98 and 18, and GDPR 2018. Read the description, you've got all the links there. It's required to find us if you haven't already found us in the private bit domains that we frequent. Initially, I'm going to uh, endeavor to screen share <laughs> to bring to you what's going on. Window capture right there. Let me get onto the uh, and I'll make sure that all is as it should be. Day. Welcome, Gosh. Lindsay, Mr. Dav, Claire, and that one, or this one, and um, get my screen set up. I'll just screen share. Don't review. All right. Working. Don't know what's happened. I've had an update, as you can tell, <laughs> and I might uh, might not be able to screen share with you. In which case, I'll go away and reconfigure. Um. Get back to you for some reason. Maybe it's minimised. Try that. Let me try that for you. Just bear with me. Catch up. There we go. I believe that's done it. Patience is indeed a virtue. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. All right governor's back in control <laughs> honestly you just saw the layout then of all those buttons and things it's not like um, the other applications that you use to go live it's uh, it's my preferred technology 
other than the other ones that are available for audio and uh, streaming bitrate refresh and I don't like to advertise other platforms uh, even though we use them from time to time I want to be independent and private so let's see who's in the house with Lindsay, Dav, Claire, Kathy, Tony, Barnster, Gansders, what what thank you for joining so hopefully on the screen you're gonna see a redacted hello money spider not a redacted money spider the tiniest thing will be gone um we're gonna go through this and i've got some uh, other documents to share you as well with regards to um what i've done and i'm not uh, giving any legal advice i'm not giving you any advice i'm just sharing my activities there's a document drafted up by um brother elvin kevin maximus the living legend himself we shared this into facebook telegram and i believe um within the uh, courses section of SPL's Pro um, courses, workshops, guides section, and um, it's in the files as well for you to download from the literature library and the resource vault. Let me just do an audio check. Seems to be good. Well done. Okay, a little introduction for you though. Why are we doing this? Well, the history of the world as we know it. Is mostly based on violence there is no honor in this realm um, up until this point you know um, recently um, what the 1500s onwards we seem to have become rather civilized or pretending to be civilized with our laws codified laws secular laws uh, legislative laws um, Templar laws canon laws ma maritime and admiralty laws you know uh, we are um, following universal laws I come to you today as a hermeticist and a, um, a fan and a promoter of um, the hermetic principles, universal principles. What law do I follow? Um, not so much Christianity. And we use Christianity, the Abrahamic faith. And um, I've had a lot of emails reference how we govern, how we um, how we manage, what we use as our parameters, our ethical and moral guidelines or morality guidelines. And um, each to their own, as you've seen by my recent, uh, and I hope you have recent uh, interviews and presentations with Rice TV um, on Beth Martins um, and the video update uh, on Indiglo with um, 5,000 5, 5, scribe celebration uh, giveaway you should know where we are and what we do and we navigate the legal system legal being the undoing of God's law we navigate that legal system with lawful ways out but the legal system is based on the holy bible and the scriptures there and we recognize the, uh, the pathways within that and you'll notice that we also use a multifaceted area of um, law legislation abrahamic and um, trust various areas of trust so the world is based on violence mostly up until very recently and i'd argue that there is a um, soft war going ahead at the moment Man no longer seems to care for their unalienable rights. They care more about their standard of life. The modern world in 2021 seems to have outgrown notions like rights. The ever-present threat remains to the crowns whilst ever free will exists. For centuries, the establishments and institutions have tried to control our free will with religion, with politics, recently with consumerism, to eliminate our dissent and our resistance. Now the time has come where the crown seemingly are giving science a try. All right, so we've got quite a bit to bring you in the form of an update. I've left my tooth out on purpose. Um, you've seen the real me today. Watch out for pirates. <laughs> um, I am not one, but um, yes, old pirates, yes, they rob I, in the words of Bob there. So I'm going to go through a simple process um, as per the title and then I'm going to go on to extra supplementary news and some uh, answers to questions via emails I've recently had and um, I hope you enjoy the presentation of what I've got for you today. So you should see on the left hand side um, which I'll highlight uh, and not because it will do both the, uh, the bit that's highlighted here group practice and the practice manager and the left hand side is where um, the addressee is the right hand side is where um, we are 
that I originate and my care of address as the data controller for my person. All right, so you've asked us to uh, simplify and explain um, letters, notices, standards of them, layout, justification, insignificance, uh, importances of what we do and why we do it. Um, you'll notice um, in a bit, I'll show you the website and the courses section. And I've, um, furthermore, we are developing that to simplify this for you as well. Um, and you can take that uh, workshop guide, aka course, at your leisure. And it was given as part of the uh, 12 credits promises. Um, entry for the annual membership we're about to move on with the silver layer level the secondary bronze was the first your key competence which is known as merit level and then the silver standard. silver funny noise just happened then um, which is your foundation level and then the gold which is the um, the advanced special level um, that means something's working on my programming um, something's happened in the chat room. I don't know if that's a new scribe or a donation or something, but um, I'll get back to that later. All very technical, but thank you for joining today. So that's the layout left and right, um, to on the left and from on the right. Private and confidential. I put a NHS reference number there for my person on the left got the date of when this was drafted the 21st of June and you've got your notice to agent is notice to principal notice to principal is notice to agent notice how I've spelt principal and um, I'll get into that later and the reasons why you are free to spell and draft and uh, as I say communicate as you see fit I am the principal the principality PAL the source of the credit the originator the prime um, principle um, is correct in my view and we've had extensive discussions on this and we can continue to do so there is articles in the forum where I've um, in splspro.com in etymological forum that we have and I've outlined why I use what I do and it proceeds to say notice the justification now is all center not uh, left or right this is not a letter do not treat it as such wants to be a capital there this is the first version it is a notice served under the doctrine of notices correspondence is also pursuant to the data protection act 1998 probably 2018 and the general data protection rules 2018 any failure to respond to this will be met with a complaint against your private company being raised with the information commissioner's office failure to comply with gdpr 2018 is considered by the ICO to be a criminal offence. Dear, and that's where the doctor's name was inserted, where the X's are, and the practice manager. Under, your, under the aforementioned legislation, we hereby give you clear notice that, the, that we require that you do not share any of our private, personal, and sensitive data with any third parties without our express written consent. Right, that's our person, personal, personage, personnel. Um, as I say, I am the data controller for my person, doorman, the legal fiction, the estate, the legal personality, the data self of David. So personal is, is more than enough to express what we're on about with regards to status, standing and capacity. Any failures to comply with this notice will be met with a complaint being raised by the Information Commissioner's Office the ICO and considerable compensation being sought from yourselves is set out in the general data protection regulations, not rules, regulations. We require acknowledgement of this notice and your agreement to comply in writing and within seven, and the number seven in brackets just in case, yes, uh, days of receipt. No ill will, frivolity or vexation intended, but kind regards by David, Yarson, Jeremita, your representative, beneficiary and set law for the Mr. David Jason Jeremita Trust Estate. Um, why not? UCC don't often use it. 
But in certain things with regards to retention and retainment of rights, assertion of rights, and um, going into commerce, sometimes it's uh, it's fun to put them on. No one's ever questioned them. It's never done any damage. You don't have to include them, and um, they aren't just explicitly relevant in America. So um, Universal gives you a clue there about the jurisdiction of Universal uh, codes. Commercial codes, universally commercial codes. I wouldn't. I'd argue that there's a clue in the title there that they aren't just explicit to America as well as all of the crown courts across the realm. So you can take that out if you want. One three zero eight one three four one three dash four zero two brackets B and one. All natural rights are retained and reserved on a sunset without recourse without the UK. And you see there, I've put autograph by, and then page of one copy to file where the autograph by uh, line is underlined uh, draw a line under it uh, you don't need to put that line you can remove that I've used it for emphasis on my notice I just had by and then I wrote there in red pen David simply all lowercase David and that's it that's gone off to the GP as it is there so I'll look at the questions that you put in regarding that and um, I didn't I declined to use the um, online service for now I'm going to be doing that later if you read the video description I've told you I'm going to go through a process we have until September to get all of this done and um, that was designed by brother Kevin created and authored by Broseph Kevin so if you just um, bear with me don't need to save that I'm gonna get something else up to share for you next uh, number two proof of proof of the service when I handed that in I asked for this bear with me while I um, I tell the window capture now capture else all right don't do that Give me a second I'm going to show you the proof of service that I received from the doctors because when I gave them that she told me at the door I just need to post it in the letterbox and they weren't even wanting to open the door to let them to take this from me so I said that wouldn't be preferable I will need to uh, get some proof of service proof of service proof of postage proof of receipt all right so Just tell the window capture to get um, next page up for you. Let's see the proof of. <coughs> opened it but it, uh, it hasn't got the option for me to share it so uh, I'm going through a little bit of a teething problem here because I have um, no updates and the layouts changed but bear with me I will not disappoint you I'm learning on the fly here learning on the fly <coughs> I believe that should now come up hopefully so um, let me go through what that actually is there a little bit of delay on tube so let me just confirm that that's coming on right there we go see we got the power on the left hand side it's got the GP just a slip from the GP of which they um, I've got their details on for the practice surgery they took my uh, identity my name my person's name which is listed there and I gave them two things I gave them medical records form which I'll explain in a minute I gave them the data sharing opt-out what I've just shown you it was drafted by brother Kevin and I've read through 
and then they put the stamp to the right hand side which has got the uh, practice details and the date of me sharing that okay so the left hand side is the details of the practice surgery middle is uh, my person's details the data and self details and then underneath that was um, what items I gave them medical records form data sharing opt-out on the right was their stamp to say they had received that okay so the next thing to share with you is the, re the reply that I got okay The moment <coughs> there we go. very short and sweet nothing technical here I have edited out the details All right. Here's the reply. Some of you aren't getting the, the reply <coughs> of what I have here. Some of you are getting another letter. I already know what you're going to be saying, and I have that prepared for you as well. All right, so at the top was the doctor's relevant details, and um, I've left on the bare basics. This is a scanned letter of what the practice sent me, as you can see there short and sweet dear Mr. Jeremita they ignored I don't really mind they ignoring the uh, sign off and what I put it as uh, they've accepted the fact that the Mr. Jeremita's data the person the data self um, thank you for your letter dated it was a notice a first mistake what I read out this is a notice under the you know it is not a letter but they they're not trained legally they are receptionists and um maybe not competent in the in the art of what we are so you forgive that for now um, thank you for your letter received the 22nd of june 2021 it's now the 27th of june okay so i got this um friday friday was the date of the 25th so it took them from the 22nd to the 25th right three days action that Oh, it's on zoom mode uh. regarding your request that the practice does not share any of your private data personal and sensitive data with any third parties without your express written consent this letter is confirmation that we have actioned your request yours sincerely and I've blotted out the details the privacy sent on behalf of and then I've taken out the group practices name so for me the um, requirement and the instructions went without a hitch and went very smoothly there was no problems and it was done within three days <clears throat> there are a couple of little issues of which I've highlighted but I'm not going to be um, arguing with that right now then I go to what some of you are actually getting which is this one with me again while I um, get this on the screen for you do, 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 do. and I will need to get a, <coughs> a little drink of apple juice <coughs> let me just check the screen I'm going to read the title descent from secondary use of GP patient identifiable data so this is what some of you may have already seen this some of you might not but for the benefit of those that haven't that are about to do the communication to the GP or perform the communication to the GP and, and, and uh, advise them inform them instruct them compel, compel them yes uh, you may end up getting this back and I've seen this um, on um, on a couple of the posts in telegram and I've had a couple of emails about this which is why I'm doing this video today so after sending that first form that notice uh, DPA and uh, GDPR 
they write back saying they're confused and they don't understand what you're saying and they say if it's to do with the dissent and the opt-out um, regarding GP patient identifiable data to third parties they send this form which I didn't get and I won't need to use but for the benefit of those that haven't done it and for the, what, what, what I've just outlined and opted out and for the benefit of those that are and that are doing it manually in the in this in the cell and getting proof of service and going through the ways that we do it rather than using dot com um G nhs data opt out services um i don't trust them i don't like them they're impersonal and there's no um authority as such with um, autographs and so forth so we have a, a tried and tested way of communicating noticing executing documents executing them as deeds how to execute deeds correctly um, and I'll leave it there each to their own which is why I said it's not legal advice I'm not uh, telling you what to do I'm sharing and I'm trying to help it's simply as, as what we do so it says uh, dear GP I'm writing to give notice that I refuse consent for my identifiable information and the identifiable information of those for whom I am responsible delete as appropriate to be transferred from your practice systems for any purpose other than my medical care so on that first notice if you have any young bloods you would um, include them and add them into that and edit that word document and put down also because you are the um, the set law and the principal um, you know the one that has equitable title to them uh, young bloods sons and daughters you would include them on that first notice and edit that slightly okay and then um, uh, as well as yourself your your person's self your data self <laughs> however you want to put it you put down your um, sons and daughters data cells and identify them with the national insurance with the NHS number and um, the legal date of birth not the born day but the, the, the date of birth that the doctors hold and specify them along with yourself please take whatever steps necessary to ensure my our confidential personal information is not uploaded and recorded my dissent by whatever means possible oh well, is not uploaded and record my dissent by whatever means possible this includes adding the dissent from secondary use of GP patient identifiable data code and then it's got read v2 blah 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 that's some kind of code there that's um, for the office use not what I've put in there that's just what somebody sent me I've seen one of these physically um, last week of a brother called Simon is all I'm going to say he mentioned this in the public telegram chat and a brother called Ben sent me this saying this is what you use to opt out but clearly it isn't what you use because as I've shown you and the reply and the fast action on that I didn't have any problems doing it manually and via shooting uh, a deed and getting proof of service for that so, uh, it says I'm aware of the implications of this request understand it will not affect the care that I we receive and I will notify you should I change my mind your sincerely signature Dave information to help identify my records please complete in block capitals in brackets square look title surname family name so at least they give you the right to have a family name not just a surname title for your person the four names for your person your address where the office is and where it's concerning postcode date of birth and nhs number if known space for additional patient details overleaf and this here what i'm showing you is from nhs digital says the gp practices are required to action this opt-out c and then there's a the website link there for that more copies of this letter can be downloaded from medicalconfidential.org forward slash how hyphen to hyphen opt hyphen out so i would uh, i would uh, consider that you would uh, call them up and say where is the confusion why have you sent me this out i've sent you a notice or a uh, attach the original notice to this and fill that out with um, your person's details um, can't really do much there because they've already um, formatted it so you could 
write that out again you could copy all of this write this out on a new document and then you can tell them via an autograph the date of that you can put down your relevant person's details and then you can do what I did on the notice and then separate it out on the bottom and then you can you know, put your status standing and capacity separate to your persons you can attach that initial notice that I showed you at the beginning of the video on with this we're not legally obliged we're not legally allowed to give it legal advice so um, the doctors should know the GP surgeries should know exactly what they're doing there what is required of them all right so um, interesting that some of you are getting that returned to you um, when you've given initially a copy of that first notice that told you at the beginning of the chat so I don't know how you feel about that and what way you want to go but this is an official legal document there is the first one I showed you that was drafted by Kevin just through the uh, open office document and there's a word file so there's a open text document and a word file in the public telegram group you can access that now by looking at the video details and going through um, the links and the details and you will find telegram you can SPL's public telegram chirp you can go to uh, Facebook SPLSpro.com you can also find it on the um, on the domain literature library and resource vault so if I endeavor to um, and do that yes I will do so we'll go up to the uh, library resource library when he clicks Go with me should all be going automatic now yeah, yeah I've got some other bits to read you in a minute there you go someone's uh, Ashton Alexis just asked to join SPL we have 404 documents found I'll go through where I'll go through the relevant ones new ones maybe interested in seven starting a prosecution in a magistrate's court and there was a member I did a video called money claims some uh, weeks ago and, um, I'm releasing that in the private as um, content creators and other YouTube uh, thought leaders and mavericks are uh, taking influence and copycatting our information and I'm limiting what I do in the public now and um, I'm releasing more stuff in the private uh, which is my prerogative um, there are magpies of magic and thieves of tradition all over Facebook, YouTube, the internet domains themselves and I'm giving far too much away and I should be generating for our private community SPLSProCreators.community that being uh, what I'm on about there part 7 so the criminal procedure rules part 7 um, starting a prosecution in a magistrate's court so there's some guidance there to um, the the thumbnail the part seven direction um, and the link is there from the uh, .gov UK community or justice.gov UK in particular for the source sex discrimination act 1975 has been recently uploaded because that's very referenceable um, for what we need going forward with sovereignty I'll explain very soon there's a source link there for that as well that come from legislation.gov.uk all public source open you know, use it for education non-profit it's completely legal lawful and um, we need this to help you refer to to guide you with where we're going the equality act 2010 all right so uh, equality act 2010 sex discrimination section 11a the equality act 2010 prohibits sex discrimination it applies equally to both men and women and prevents direct and indirect discrimination harassment and victimization because of a person's gender um, section 11 in relation to the protected characteristics of a sex a reference to a person who has a particular protected characteristic so um, Equality Act 2010 Companies Act 2006 this is to do with execution of documents and um, signatures seals individuals uh, behalf of companies authority this is particular acts and sections to do with um, when you say it's not signed and it needs to be signed 
this is how we're going to back up in the in the second tier um, the merit level the silver level is going to be brought to you on why we do this and uh, what we use to uh, to argue validity of a document and if a, a document has been executed or a deed has been executed correctly uh, moving on GDPR compliance checklist a step-by-step -step guide to maintaining GDPR compliance something different but it's useful for everybody's reference I need that myself for um, governance and covenants of compliance with those rules lawfully legally and I'm also going to be making a course to help small companies um, abide, ab ab abide by GDPR compliance checklist watch out how many other YouTube channels and I'll take these comments uh, from I and then start making video content along these lines there's at least five I'm watching that um, echo what we do and within uh, hours days and weeks and um, that's when I say magpies of magic and thieves of tradition content creators cannot think for themselves won't work with us but then take the information and move forward with it and uh, I'm not going to mention names but there's a particular couple that are really really um, starting to annoy me guide to the general data protection regulation so this is a guide exactly explains the provisions of the data protection to help organizations comply with requirements again that ties in with the compliance checklist um, yeah that one there in blue that's from the ICO all right so regulations and this one is from the government from um, the resources of the legislation in the data protection act 1998 okay European GDPR regulations UK GDPR and if you operate in Europe and also it's applicable um, to America it's quite quite a lot of the realm in itself all right so that's interesting to have regulation of the European Parliament and of the Council and um, what's that that's to do with GDPR the UK general data protection regs UK law which came into effect on the 1st of Jan 21 sets out key principles basically rights and obligations for processing of data in the UK except for law enforcement and intelligent agencies we've got the source there of legislation.gov.uk that was page one the literature library and the resource vault bear with me while I load up the next page data protection act 1998 section 10 guidance for staff all right so if you have a company and somebody serves you if you're a small company big company any company somebody serves a section 10 of the 1998 uh, data protection act that's how you uh, uh, comply with it we also serve um, section 10 Kevin is the one again the living legend that is Kevin and gave me that um, couple of paragraphs that we send to companies like I'm gonna send to uh, Julie Leonard at the DVLA for failure to comply with the um, video that I've done some of you may have seen the trust agency correction that I did with regards to um, Twitter videos, Indy, DVLA agency, agency relation and correction. So you'd look at this video, it's about a 90 minute video that I've done there, where I've gone through <coughs> the notice that I sent to uh, Julie and the uh, GDPR and data. They've um, dishonored that, so I now need to get them to stop processing the data because they've um, passed it on to the complaints department. And, um, I'm going to serve them the section 10 stop processing data until you prove legitimate interest moving on Human Rights Act 1998 you've got the human rights uh, the, the main articles of the Human Rights Act 1998 all right uh, with the conventions and provisions there reference guide to consent for examination or treatment second edition so that's a guide to the legal framework that health professionals need to take account of in obtaining valid consent to examination treatment of care that's a very strong excellent document given to us by our uh, telegram um, chirp and chat with regards to consent for nothing no treatment can happen until you are informed duly informed and actually consent to it informed consent in UNESCO's bioethics document itself from the United Nations all right UN and then ESCO bioethic document volume number one 
informed sorter, Bilajak, informed consent in bioethics documents, the abstract here, the aim of this paper is to demonstrate through the analysis of UNESCO's bioethics uh, documents with special reference to the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights and the Bioethics Core Curriculum, the spot and the role of doctrine with regards to informed consent. We also look at other things we've done there with um, regard to the prudent patient, I believe in the Bolum report that I mentioned some years ago. We've got the essential probate checklist, the last will and testament information. And that's taken from the internet and the, the domain there. I put the links in and the topic with regards to that. We've got uh, an express dedicated topic forum with topics for last will and testament, powers of attorney, and so forth, and what you would need to check, do, and um, research in itself what probate is. Um, attorney, attorneys at law, and powers of attorney. Remember, they're separate. It doesn't mean that you're appointing somebody when you get powers of attorney. Um, as a lawyer or a solicitor you are actually um, managing your estate should you um, have difficulty being present so your last will and testament will only come into effect when you are no longer with us on this realm if you are taken away and um, abducted or you're taken ill um, if you're not incarcerated abducted go lost lose your mental faculties become non compass mentors um, and you get taken away your powers of attorney will come into effect and um, your last will and testament will not come into effect your last will and testament will only come into effect when you take your mortal breath so there are step-by-step -step, uh, protections that you need to consider that we help you go through and um, guide you with um, it appears that I haven't uploaded this uh, NHS document as of yet uh, NHS the notice GDPR. Um, I will do that and make sure everybody in the private's got it. It's in our private exclusive SPLS Pro Telegram group and um, it's in the public Telegram group and it's on Facebook. So continue on with reading through some recent documents. American Legal Equity No Respect of Persons by Gerald R. Thompson. So that's to do with the states and uh, as we are, we're primarily Anglo Britain. Um, the Sovereign Republic of New Britain to be exact but we deal with the English UK UK of GB you know we also cater for uh, USA and the European family and so we are able to help you with regards to uh, inequality within the administration of law um, you know and uh, your state and federal laws seemingly like ours our legislation and this uh, emergency second tier of uh, COVID legislation results in in inequity inequality inequity however you want to say that so uh, interesting document in itself and we've got the blackstones uh, commentaries from 1796 various ones 1800s uh, i didn't read it out sorry the digital version number four of the commentaries on the laws of england sir william blackstone 1769 of the persons capable of committing crimes Digital version three, the commentaries on the laws of England of Sir William Blackstone, 1767 to 1800 of private wrongs. Digital version number two, the commentaries on the laws of England of Sir William Blackstone, 1766, 1876, rights of things. Name, name denotes an object, a thing, a noun. That's not man, that's not woman. All right, so things, name, object, thing, noun, legal, legal equity, legal being the undoing of God's law. It's not your correct, authentic, true, um, sovereign capacity or authentic being capacity. So a thing, rights of things. Let's look at that through in the title. Digital version one, the commentaries on the laws of England of Sir William Blackstone, 1876. The rights of persons. Companies are also persons, persons are persons, a true person, an artificial person, legal person, there's many types of persons, and God is no respecter of persons. Then these ones, the same books, but these are number four, persons capable of committing crimes, the 13th edition of private wrongs, the uh, 1876, the rights of things, 1876 the rights of persons these are actually the books scanned themselves 
of the original books from the library and the Gutenberg project. The first four that I mentioned here are digital versions which aren't scans of actual books, they're just uh, text pages that are crisp and digital. These last four, latter four, that I'm scrolling down to, are the actual books themselves scanned. Sir William Blackstone, Volume 1, The Rights of Persons, 4th edition, 1876. So we have Halsbury's Laws collection, we have Black's Laws collection, we have uh, many uh, commentaries and studies of the laws that we can you know, use for our references and articulation. Blackstone's being the commentaries of laws of England. All right, so laws of England, Blackstone is mentioned in America. You know, we've got England with Halsbury's Laws. And then Black's laws themselves are crown copyright language for legalese, definitions, interpretations, and etc. Then we move through to Halsbury's laws and various volumes that we've got there through um, free legal means. Next, we move on to what I've been um, looking to post about news. All right, there's going to be some rather big news this weekend to give to you all very big in fact, exciting news from our trust point of view. A brother called Jay is looking at some graphic design for our Sovereign Republic of New Brighton, which is the home of peace and prosperity and the sovereign or sovereign states of being. Sovereign, the international name for sovereign sovereignty. Um, and the Gulf shall release our original and strong process to move any of you into the private and to eventually lead you all to claim your unalienable rights and obtain equitable remedy in all areas and access our energy and mineral rights for thy equitable relief. Our evidence of life, essence and incarnation is your first step on this path. Once you are in our private Genesis Exodus Trust of Truth, you can all stand behind myself, perhaps, if you should so desire. I shall be the lead claimant once my claims and case is presented in the Supreme High Courts of Equity as I pass through into the private, as a private, authentic, sovereign you know, man, the principle, ideally man, just take man from that, so shall you all, just as Jesus Christ freed the indentured slaves out of Egypt from King Herod's grasp. Um, now, recognise the prophecy has been fulfilled and that's written in various uh, books and scriptures and passages, zero forward to 2021 20, and zero reverse all the way back 12,000 BC as far as I can find. Prophecies have been fulfilled and now it's time for our legacy um, to begin. The world, the, the dominion, the, the realm is in the point of a, uh, of a conscious evolution where we're all questioning authority. They've, uh, the establishments and the institutions have broken our trust, the monarchies, um, the health departments recently, Matt Hancock, scandals, do as I say, not as I do, they don't follow their own rules, um, we'll go on forever about all of the scandals and the systems and the courts and the, you know, the biggest uh, high court um, criminal review going off at the moment. Um, I'm going to read you some stories about all of that with regards to um, my channel. But, um, crimes that are going off and the inequity and inequality that we seem to be seeing um, the post office uh, scandal I'm on about with the biggest uh, review on um, criminal high court basis there and um, some stories that I've got to bring to you resignation letter from got a hold of his name what was his name somebody pitchfork believe he was called my old missing brother we'll get on to that later Colin Pitchfork sorry Lord Chief Justice Secretary Robert Buckland back in the news again challenging the ludicrous decision to release the child killer Colin Pitchfork he's a double child murderer was jailed for life in 1988 but not all his life life in Roman speak is 25 years Colin got a minimum of 30 but it was reduced to 28 contradiction of terms there in itself so um, Lord Chief Justice uh, yeah, Pitchfork was a big deal on there alright the uh, man in question in case you don't know who Colin Pitchfork the double child murderer is quote from Matthew chapter 18 verse 6 given by a lady called Angel on our public telegram chat those who shall offend one of the, these little ones which believe in me 
it were better for him that a milestone were, millstone were hanged around his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So uh, I said that they should lock him up and throw away the key and I asked you for your comments on the various platforms that I manage. And that was a quote from Matthew 18, uh, verse 18, chapter, chapter 18, verse 6. Those who shall offend one of these little ones which believeth in me, it were better off for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's the King James Version of Matthew. So loss of trust, loss of confidence, loss of many things there. Um, am I reading? So our evidence of life and essence and incarnation it would be your first step on this path. Once you are in our private Genesis exit proof, you can stand behind myself all right, and look at doing this. You might be wondering, what is that? Well, um, open this to show you, for those that don't know or may not know, hopefully this will pop up automatically. We have an instrument which is unique and original. You can read about it on them. Um, the video on Indiglo. Just let me check that this is actually changing in that to pop up on my home page. There it is. All right, I'm going to go back to that in a minute. We'll look at this here on Indiglo uh, home page. E L E I proclamation public to private status standing in capacity going from public legal person private lawful man or woman. All right, so um. That's on the video there. There's links on the home page. I'll show you where to get it in a moment. So um, that's what we do. Um, three witnesses do that um, instrument. And I'll explain why this is important for you to consider. Um, get that when you join our trust and decide to um, then mission this for yourself through your own free will. That's what um, instrument I'm talking about and um, what we've designed, all lowercase, calling given name and lowercase clan name. Syntax on mine is the syntax, English grammatical syntax, not David Windmiller, just syntactic structures to comply with English literature, English language, English syntax, all right, to Oxford. And Cambridge and um, biblical references of uh, how we speak. We don't use legalese, we don't use David Windmillers, we don't use anybody's but plain and simple English. All right, and that um, is explained on that video that I've just shown you. That's my one that um, I use for display to give you an idea, which can also be found on the home pages of Indy that I've just shown you. I got lost uh, on my own channel then. <coughs> have a look at the uh, chirp in a minute all right oh there Eli proclamation so you click on that get to it from Indy all right and you'd watch that or you would go to um, our home page if you're not um, a scribe a supporter you would like to know more it's written all here in the introduction and you can click on this hyperlink in the text which will do this open up the YouTube video straight for you to watch the proclamation the evidence of life essence incarnation proclamation public to private remedy status standing in capacity brings me on to a little bit of passages I now need to read you before I go on to King Herod Herod the Great um, I've explained many times a sovereign citizen is an oxymoronic statement you are either sovereign private authentic man woman or you're a citizen, public, legal, um, personality, entity, um, citizen, citizenship. All right. So the people in the 1950s gave Queen Elizabeth II their sovereign status at her coronation. All right. So sovereignty cannot be given to somebody. One cannot give something that one does not possess. So those of you that ask me to prove about sovereignty being a real thing, because the states have a hard time digesting this, Australia does, Canada does. The Commonwealth and the state troopers are apparently being a bit harsh with you and other thought leaders out there that don't cognize the levels of law and the multifaceted remedies, areas and languages that we have done can't grasp this and they're telling you it's wrong. So one, 
sovereign citizen is an oxymoronic statement. You are sovereign or you are a citizen. There is rules of law, of rules, and there is law. There is not a rule of law. You have rules, policy, procedure, public, legislation, common laws, and then you have laws, Abrahamic laws, um, and law of England and Wales, laws of England and Wales, and the equitable remedy that we find for the legal um, charges, claims, are solved with generally equitable remedy you can generally find legislation to to suit to solve that as well um, you cannot mix equity and legislation those that seek equity must do equity you cannot mix the jurisdictions you can't use legal common law legislation uh, remedy mixed in with equity the two do not mix um, and a rule a maxim of equity uh, which is a rule of equity because it's legal equity it's not uh, so much uh, lawful but even though it comes under England and Wales as opposed to UK policy, when the rules of common law and those of equity collide, equity shall prevail, which is how you move from one at law level to the next. So back to sovereignty, the people gave QE2 their sovereign status at her coronation. One cannot give something that one does not possess. Look at the 10 commercial maxims of law. The truth in commercial law is classified as sovereign. That's the London Templar and law societies, 10 commercial maxims of law, which have the biblical precepts to accompany them. America, you've got the same. Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Commonwealths, foreign English territories, wherever there's a central bank and the London city courts shipped out there, you know, legalese and court systems, you will find that truth in commercial law is sovereign. You do not write your own maxims, as another YouTube channel has said, how to write your maxims at law. You use the maxims to, um, to uh, counter their arguments and you look at the governing architecture of their legal London Law Society, which are governed by the 10 commercial maxims and biblical precepts that come with them. There are ones out there copying what we're doing and incentivizing the thought leaders, magpies of magic, thieves of tradition, and they're getting it wrong because they're running before they can walk. Okay, so I'm honored that you would be emulating us and uh, this channel and our domain but uh, you're emulating uh, your imitation is is futile and it's not quite correct you don't write maxims you use the maxims which is the architecture the governance of their legal law society and uh, i've explained enough there on that so i'll move on parliaments are liars and thieves they are not sovereign as they are not as they are, are wards of the state a ward someone in their all type or capacity, Queen Elizabeth II, Mr. Matt Hancock, uh, recently in the news and had to resign through his scandals. You know, the status that they hold is not sovereign. Parliament doesn't have any sovereignty. The Queen doesn't have any sovereignty as such. And uh, we claim back what we already gave her. Well, I didn't give it her. It happened in the 1950s. Man wasn't even born then. All right, then we look at what else did I say? The truth in commercial law is sovereign. See the maxims for that. Search the Ten Commercial Maxims and Biblical Precepts of Templar Law. The word sovereign has 209 occurrences of it in the Bible. All right, and as I've put down on that evidence of life, essence, incarnation that I showed you for uh, myself, David, it has three witnesses to witness that. Now, Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, but if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses wherever the two or more are gathered in my name i am with them for where two or three are gathered together in my name there i am in the midst of them matthew chapter 18 verse 20 john eighteen seventeen. even in your own law it is written that the testimony of two men is valid are the witnesses credible yes they are I've had to do this with uh, in mind that there is um, the three major Abrahamic faiths Christianity Judaism and Islam but I've also included the ones that aren't in those three major major Abrahamic faiths in our universal non-sectarian remedy at law where we provide this remedy for all houses all colors all creeds and all continents all right so Moving on, I'll tell you why, I'm getting to it, hold tight. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. 
Then we move to Romans 2.11 For there is no respect of persons with God. Alright. Romans 2.11 context But unto them that are contentious and do not obey truth but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile but glory, honour and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile for there is no respect of persons with God for as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law and as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law for not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law these having not the law are a law unto themselves I draw you to Matthew Hancock he thinks is a law unto himself look recently Acts 10 25 to 37 God is no respecter of person grantor of dominion God and the um, you know the, the things that I brought to you with regards to um, with regards to hey there I might need some other documents uh, I don't think I'll put it in this one a Psalms I'm going for and John I believe that I've recently put out that are in the documents I'm going to uh, I'm going to share with you very very soon Luke 2 29 now O sovereign Lord thou dost send thy servant away in peace and fulfillment of thy word when remember when Jesus spoke the truth to his accusers he would justify himself by quoting law first he would quote God's law and after quoting God's law he would often quote the accusers law and use that against them as well that's exactly what we're doing with the Bible all right as, uh, as well it is uh, a codified handbook to titles split titles rules law and procedures in Christian nations of the courts which have a Bible within them for example Jesus would say did ye never read in the scriptures and then quote God's law Matthew seven fourteen one is the easy way of pleasing self which most choose and which leads to destruction the other is the narrow way of denying self for Jesus sake which leads to life Matthew seven thirteen and 14 one reason why many do not follow the narrow way is that they are deceived by those who teach their own views on how people can find meaning in life because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it now if you go to the 10th chapter of St John verse 30 there is a passage where Jesus says I and the Father are one there are some people who are not intimate disciples around the time of Jesus and they were horrified and they immediately picked up stones to stone him he says many good works I have shown you from the Father and for which of these do you stone me and they replied for good work we stone you not but for blasphemy because you being a man make yourself God and he replied Jesus that is isn't it written in your law I have said ye are gods he is quoting the 82nd Psalm it is not it is it not written in your law I have said ye are gods if God called them those to whom he gave his word gods and you cannot deny the scriptures how can you say I blaspheme because I said I am a son of God well that's the whole thing that I'm on about in a nutshell most of you are getting that some of you aren't bear with me Jesus in his exoteric exoteric teaching as recorded in the synoptic gospels was pretty cagey about this he didn't come right out and say I and the father are one instead he identified himself with the Messiah described in the second part of the prophet Isaiah the suffering servant who was de despised and rejected of men and this man is the non-political Messiah in other words it was convenient to make the identification even though it wouldn't get him into trouble but to his, his elect disciples as recorded in St John he came out and said before Abraham was I am I am the way the truth and the life I am the resurrection and the life I am the living bread that comes down from heaven I and the father are one and he who has seen me has seen the father and there can be no mistaking that language my scribes 
And so the Jews found this out and they decided to put him to death. Or uh, Pontius Pilate, I do believe, uh, or had him put to death for blasphemy. This is no cause for any special antagonism to the Jews, I would like to state. No anti-Semiticism. It's fact in the book there of the story. Um, we would do exactly the same thing. It's always been done. It will always be done. It happened to one of the great Sufi mystics in Persia who had the same experience. You know. So what happened? The apostles didn't quite get the point. They were awed. By the miracles of Jesus they worshipped him as people do worship gurus and as you know what lengths that can go to if you've been around guru land and so the Christians uh, said okay okay Jesus of Nazareth was the son right there nobody else so we look at these legal systems the foundations they are dark and negative due process of law is a metaphysical cover phrase for legal concepts such as corporations which are property rights legal persons Legal persons can be companies, corporations, property rights, metaphysical. These corpses are supernatural entities which do not have a verifiable existence except to the eyes of a particular faith, the law society, the Templar faith. Rules of law or rules and law, but they say that when they say rules of law, they reference these legal concepts. These concepts are just theorems. Jurisprudence is a special branch of the science of transcendental nonsense. A cult reference from the Cabal courts, the religious temples as such, you know, cults. So the Cabal courts, we would say they are religious temples. We use Abrahamic law, we use United Nations, Declaration of Human Rights, we use the European courts, we use other covenants, we use trust law, we use... Uh, Can hear that? I think that's the scrap man going past or something. We use um, some legal rights, such as all humans are afforded the right to be recognised <coughs> in front of the law as a person. A P U R S E hyphen O N purse on person P E R S O N. We stay as authentic sovereign womans. A leader can only compromise himself so many times before he loses the faith of his flock. Do not follow the wrong shepherd. Jeremiah 56. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their fold, resting place. So I remind you again, legal is the undoing of God's law. Foundations of law as follows. The Judeo-Christian Bible tells a wonderful story. In fact, often referred to as the greatest story ever told and so it is you are now about to find out why in the new testament of the christian bible which is a provocative and most serious challenge that's laid down on the whole of christianity since it bears directly on our subject we will quote it if christ not be risen then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also in vain and we are found false witness of god and if christ not be raised your faith is vain yet ye are yet in your sins 1 Corinthians 15 14 15 and 17 in the New Testament there is a warning given to all who would build a house namely before you lay the foundation find out what the foundation itself will rest on solid rock or sand the reason is obvious or to say it another way you need to stand under the foundation to get a true understanding the foundations let's closely examine the original conceptual foundations of the faith and then decide if cross christ not be risen so when we say you've got to understand inner stand and overstand that's what i referenced there all right from corinthians and that's where that comes from in order to do that we must go back not two thousand years to the birth of Christ, but eight to twelve thousand years to the birth of modern man. Gebekli Tepe is the new anchor point back to the formation of civilization. It's constantly changing this figure. But when one seeks to establish foundations, one must begin at the beginning. Remember when Jesus spoke the truth to his accusers and what I said about him justifying and quoting the law. First, he would quote God's law. After quoting God's law, he would often quote the accusers' law. Discovery has shown us the bridge between the linguistic codes, codex, code itself, phonics, subtext, 
that is written in the Bible and what is written in the legal code that is never crossed while educating or indoctrinating the masses. Over here on uh, England soil, church and state are indeed one. The Queen has handed over governance to the corporate city of London. The corporate city of London, the Queen has to ask permission to go into. So who is actually running these courts? Is it on behalf of the Queen or is it on behalf of the Crown of London? Because if the Queen has to go in, to the if the queen has to ask for permission to go into the corporate city of london and these courts are saying they're running the courts on behalf of the queen elizabeth ii the all caps fictional entity which is not sovereign because it's a, it's a legal status and a legal status cannot be authentic true and sovereign and the queen has to ask for permission to go into london and london crown are running all the courts around the world then are they the queen's courts Think about that. Just, just have that thing. You know, a man called Andy mentioned about where the courts are seated. When you ask a court, where is this court seated? You know, it's seated within the inner city of London, which is ensconced in London Town. So London Town has a place in it which is called London City. So there are two jurisdictions of London, and um, the Queen has to ask for permission to go into the corporate city of London, which is where the Templar law and society, Masonic houses, lodges and the Masonic Sun Temple um, it is so I'd argue they're not the Queen's courts and they're not carrying out justice for the Queen because there's a separate jurisdiction and permissions are required and all courts around the realm that are civil English um, even equity courts are uh, are seeded through that London corporate city which are disconnected to the Queen because she has to ask for permission to enter that corporate city let that sink in so it's not justice and it's not law it's business and it's with a crown and it's not the crown on Elizabeth's head. It could be the papacy crown, it could be another crown, crown of London and it could be the crown on Elizabeth's head. So there's three crowns in play there when we talk about the crown. Don't turn that frown upside down, we'll make a smile of it in a bit. The church and state are indeed one and cannot be separated for the authority of all law is based on God's authority ceded to man. All right, the vicar there uh, of uh, Christ is now called the Holy Father. It says in the Bible that nobody on this planet or realm should call another father. There is only one Holy Father written in the scriptures, and that is the one above. But yet the pontiffs of the uh, Vaticano City and the House of God are titled the Holy Father. That's a blasphemy straight in itself there. Now, when I say we include all... Um, and I'm going to get to King Herod and some numbers then I'm going I'm not going to be on much longer so hold tight during a television interview in 1997 the well-known American evangelist uh, Dr. Billy Graham searched the true meaning of the cross by Billy Graham for those that aren't with us and aren't up to speed the true meaning of the cross Billy Graham Billy Graham made a statement God is calling people out of the world God is calling people out of the world for his name wherever they come from the Muslim world the Buddhist world or the Christian world the Rastafarian world or others that I haven't mentioned that aren't part of the three major Abrahamic faiths which is Christianity Judaism and Islam now when I say a universal non-sectarian remedy for all this is where I got that idea from God is calling people out of the world for his name whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God they may not even know the name of Jesus but they know in their hearts they need something that they don't have and they then and they turn to the only light they have and I think they're saved and they're they turn to the only light they have and I think they're saved and they're going to be with us in heaven the strange idea is that a person can be saved without knowing Jesus Christ that's gaining popularity and uh, we're pushing that as part of SPLS Pro's Christian Disclosure it is known by names such as religious pluralism universalism universalism reconciliation ultimate reconciliation and the gospel of inclusion one verse from the Bible that is often used by them to support this idea is Acts 10.34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter 
of persons. To be a respecter of persons is to practice discrimination, favouring certain people and not others. So they say that according to this verse, as long as a person has some basic concept of God and tries to do good works to please him, God will surely accept him. But what exactly did Peter mean when he said these words? Did he mean to say that God will save all regardless of their religious beliefs and without them believing in Christ alone for salvation? No, as we study the passage where these words come from, we will find that all that it means is that God does not exclude anyone on the basis of race, class, culture, social background or position. Let us turn our Bibles now to the passage in Acts the chapter 10 verse 25 to 37 this passage reveals three important truths about the lord's plan for all men these truths help us to understand in what sense god is no respecter of persons christ welcomes all this truth is found in verse 35 but in every nation he have feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him peter said this in the house of cornelius a Roman centurion just before preaching the gospel to him. Cornelius was a God-fearing Gentile who had done plenty of good works but he still needed to hear the gospel in order to be saved. Thus it, it is not true that anyone can be saved without knowing Christ at all. What Peter meant when he said that God is no respecter of persons is that God has chosen those who are his people not from one nation alone which is Israel but he has chosen to save people from all nations of the earth. This salvation of people from all nations was actually God's plan right from the beginning. It was revealed from the time that God called Abraham and said to him, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Genesis 22.18 The future fulfilment of this promise is seen in the heavenly play, praise will be given to Christ in Revelations 5.9 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy, thy blood out of every kindred tongue and people and nation in the Old Testament we have the example um, in Genesis 14 18 and 19 um, Melchizedek king of Salam Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the Most High and um, not um, Holy Father, Most High is the terminology that is used often. Holy Father would relate to the man of the papacy in the, the Vatican City there. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram um, of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. We see another example in Job. Or Job. Um, there was a man in the land of Uz um, whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Job 1.1 1, 1. Job and Melchizedek were both outside the nation of Israel and yet they knew God and were saved by him. Christ brings peace to all is the second bit. I'm not reading it all. You can find this on the dot com in the forums. Okay. And Christ must be preached to all. So when we say that Confucius had a saying um, from ancient uh, Eastern philosophy, all right, um, do unto others as you want done unto yourself, that was written before the Holy Testament uh, themselves, and um, I'd argue perhaps the Torah, the Old Testament and the New Testament, but yet the uh, Ten Commandments from um, Moses coming down Mount Sinai after speaking to the I Am contained um, some methodology, one of them, of the Ten which is do unto others as you want done unto yourself so that was taken from um, Confucius and it wasn't so much the works of let me just see if there's anything else I need to go yep I've told you all that's relevant there so that can be done right Herod the Great what we're doing now is comparable to uh, what Jesus did when he led the indentured slaves out of uh, Egypt to the lands of milk and honey. All right, what do I mean by that? Uh, Egypt, King Herod. Herod I, also known as Herod the Great, was a Roman giant king of Judea, Judea referred to as the Herodian Kingdom, 
although God liberated the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt, slavery is not universally prohibited in the Bible and also within legal realms, legal slavery is voluntary when you submit your rights and you go and you give and equity will not aid a volunteer. Forced mandatory slavery is illegal and unlawful and it's, um, and it's a sin, all right? Slavery was permissible in certain situations so long as slaves were regarded as full members of the community. Look at Genesis 17.12. And they received the same rest periods and holidays as non-slaves. Exodus 23.12, Deuteronomy 5, and 14 to 15 and 12, 12, and were treated humanely, Exodus 21, 7 and 26. Most importantly, slavery among Hebrews was not intended as a permanent condition, but a voluntary temporary refuge for people suffering what would otherwise be death with desperate poverty. Think of today's times and how things are set up when I read this. When you buy a male Hebrew slave, he shall serve six years but in the seventh he shall go out a free person without debt a magic number seven again Sleven, seven heaven all right so the seventh year he shall go out a free person without debt exodus 21 2 but hang on a minute god is no respecter of persons but yet these bible scriptures have got person in haven't you said david that god created man man created government government created persons and um legal is the undoing of god's law and um, what my head's baking I know there's see what I say when there's messages from within and there's there's in, in inequalities inconsistencies within oh yes cruelty on the part of the owner resulted in immediate freedom for the slave so if you was cruel to your slave they could be freed that's Exodus 21 16 27 what? This made male Hebrew slavery more like a kind of long-term labor contract among individuals and less like uh, the kind of permanent exploitation that has characterized slavery in modern times. Female Hebrew slavery was in one sense even more predictive, productive. The chief purpose contempl contemplated for buying a female slave was so that she could become the wife of either the buyer or the buyer's son. Exodus 21 eight to nine as wife she became the social equal of the slaveholder and the purchase function much like the giving of dowry indeed she is even called a wife by the regulation exodus twenty one ten moreover if the buyer failed to treat the female slave with all the rights due an ordinary wife he was required to set her free she shall go out without debt without payment of money exodus twenty one eleven Yet in another sense, women had far less protection than men. Potentially, every unmarried woman faced the possibility of being sold into marriage against her will. Although this made her a wife rather than a slave, would forced marriage be any less objectionable than forced labour? In addition, an obvious loophole is that a girl or woman could be bought as a wife for a male slave rather than for the slave owner or a son. And this resulted in permanent enslavement to the owner. Exodus 21 4 even when the husband's term of enslavement ended the woman became permanent slave to an owner who did not become her husband and who owned her and who owed her none of the protections due a wife the protection against permanent enslavement also did not apply to foreigners what Leviticus 25 44 to 46 Men taken in war were considered plunder and became the perpetual property of their owners. Are we still at war? asked the recruiter in the house. Women and girls captured in war were apparently the vast majority of captives. Numbers 31, 9 to 11, 32 to 35, Deuteronomy 20, 11 to 14. Faced the same situation as female slaves of Hebrew origin, Deuteronomy what's going on here let me just check this out all right um including permanent enslavement slaves could also be purchased from surrounding nations ecclesia ecclesiastes 2 7 and nothing protected them against perpetual slavery the other protections afforded hebrew slaves did apply to foreigners but this 
must have been small comfort to those who faced a lifetime of forced labor l-o-b-o-r labor in contrast to spelling uh, it's an old-fashioned way or it's uh, inconsistent i've missed the u out in contrast to slavery in the united states which generally forbade marriage among slaves the regulations in exodus aim to preserve, preserve families intact if he comes in single he shall go out single if he comes in married then his wife shall go out with him exodus 21 3 yet often as we have seen the actual result of the regulations was forced marriage regardless of any protections afforded in the law slavery was by no means an agreeable way of life slaves were for whatever duration of their enslavement property whatever the regulations in practice there was this can i've got so much to say but i'll carry on in practice there was probably little protection against maltreatment and abuses occurred as in much of the bible god's word in exodus did not abolish the existing social and economic order but instructed god's people how to live with and justice how to live with justice and compassion in their present circumstances to our eyes the results do and should appear very disquieting in any case before we, we become too smug we should take a look at the working conditions that prevail today among poor people in every corner of the world including the developed nations of england america australia canada and etc the foreign territories of the empire and the commonwealth ceaseless labor for those working two or three jobs uh, to support families china india i'm not being critical here but sweat factories sweatshops uh, nike apple things that have been in the news recently that are facts that have been substantiated where they get a pittance and they collapse and get killed and are locked in and are jumping out of windows to commit suicide is what i'm referencing here so they have two or three jobs to support families you know abuse and arbitrary exercise of power by those in power and misappropriation of the fruits of labor by illicit business operators corrupt officials and politically connected bosses millions work today in the uk and america as well without so much as the regulations provided by the law of moses if it was god's will to protect israel <clears throat> from exploitation even in slavery what does god expect followers of christ to do for those who suffer the same oppression and worse today the exodus hebrew um, departure from egypt is the founding myth of the israelites it tells a story of israelite enslavement and departure from egypt revelations at a biblical mount sinai and wanderings in the wilderness up to the borders of canaan its message is that the israelites were delivered from slavery by yahweh <clears throat> the i am the ones whose name is unspeakable but yet we give it a name and try to speak it their god and therefore um, tetragrammaton is also another name i found in my discovery which is the uh, um, jewish name for god but yet we can't speak the name uh, so many contradictions of terms and idolaters and um, the holy father from the vatican city it's just you see why we have to pull it apart and therefore they belong to him by covenant the consensus of modern scholars is that the bible does not give an accurate account of the origins of the israelites who appear to instead to have formed as an entity in the central highlands of canaan in the late second millennium bce from the indigenous canaanite culture most modern scholars believe that the story of exodus has some historical basis but contains little material that is provable the narrative of the exodus is spread over the four biblical books of the torah or pentateuch namely exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy there is a widespread agreement that the composition of the Torah took place in the, mid, in the Middle Persian period, 5th century BCE, although some traditions behind it are older since allusions to the story are made by 8th century BCE prophets such as Amos and Hosea. The biblical exodus is central in Judaism, with it being recounted daily in Jewish prayers and celebrated in festivals such as the passover early in Christ, early christians saw the exodus as a typological prefiguration of resurrection and salvation by jesus the narrative has also resonated with non-jewish groups 
such as the early American settlers fleeing persecution in Europe and African Americans striving for freedom and civil rights biblical and narrative laws. Israel in Egypt. The story of Exodus is told in the books of Exodus, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, Numbers, the last four of the five books of the Bible, also called the Torah or Pentateuch. In the first book of the Pentateuch, the book of Genesis, the Israelites had come to live in Egypt and the land of Goshen during a famine due to the fact that an Israelite, Joseph, had become a high official in the court of the Pharaoh. Exodus begins with the death of Joseph and the ascension of a new Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. Exodus 1.8 The Pharaoh becomes concerned by the number and strength of Israelites in Egypt and enslaves them, commanding them to build at two supply or store cities called Pithom and Ramesses. I heard a funny noise again there. I don't think you did, but uh, new scribe or something's happened there. Let me check the screen edge. My chat. The Pharaoh also orders the slaughter at birth of all male Hebrew children. One Hebrew child, however, is rescued by being placed in a basket on the Nile. He is found and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, who names him Moses. Moses eventually kills an Egyptian he sees beating a Hebrew slave and is forced to flee. Maidan, Midan, marrying a daughter of the Maidanite priest Jethro. The old Pharaoh dies, a new one ascends to the throne. Moses in Maidan goes to Mount Horeb, where Yahweh appears in a burning bush and commands him to go to Egypt to free the Hebrew slaves and bring them to the promised land in Canaan. I'm on a sacred contract. I'm trying to free the indentured slaves and I want to lead you all out of um, this indentured slavery and take you to the promised land of the sovereign republic of the of uh, New Britain um, the home of peace and prosperity man woman souverain authentic flesh and blood and I, this is the big news that I've got for you in addition to what we've already given you and we've already presented I now have um, further more supportive and public common legislative laws as well as universal independent fundamental laws as well as biblical abrahamic laws more laws than you can care to wish for we have we have got it is moving forward we are having a purple flag designed with a golden lion on it to um, put on our paperwork and to assign to the sovereign republic of new britain and um, where there will be um how did claire put it i forget what she put there um, how she said it now the united sovereign states of being the unified sovereign states of being sovereign states of being us the estate the state of mind at the temples sovereign um being being having a fly like a fly has landed on me a couple of times during this video i have got land here the creator making adam from the land the mother gaia earth and look how much of this you've got to read let me just scroll down there look look how far i've gone into this for you to reference that's one stops there and then we've got um stuff on about anabaptism the quakers and the levelers and um, where i got the idea for a republic was um, anabaptism emerged during the protestant reformation it is claimed that the movement began in germany in 1521 and they had been inspired by the teachings of martin luther and a publication of that's not Martin Luther King Martin Luther and Martin Luther King two different entities all right and a publication of the Bible in German now available to read uh, now able to read the Bible in their own language they began to question the teachings of the Catholic Church um, and they believe quite a lot so look at the Anabaptists look at Anabaptism look at the Quakers and look at the levelers and America, you have a uh, Democrat side and you have a Republic side where your church and state also are very much separate, where for us over here, we are joined. So appreciate the position of the governor, David, SPLSPro.com and our ways and our remedies and the fact that our evidence of life, essence and incarnation caters for all and all can be included. How I go about that, an amazing amount of work and conceptualization, study and furthermore, as in my maverick way of doing things has come forward so 
for the thieves of tradition and the magpies of magic. I'm throwing your crumbs to catch, but you can't keep up and you can't uh, manage the data that we manage here. Number Johnny Five, need more data. Data protection, data management, data being sold, data self, man, um, David and his data self, Mr. David and David the principal. Exactly, it's all tying in. There is a thread here, I'm shutting down. We're getting to the end. I'm proving to you that you can trust in us. We are strong, we are articulate, we are diligent, and we are now going to lead the way. So the Anabaptist argued that Jesus taught that man should act in a non-violent way. We agree with that. We're non-violent. We do peace and love. We have respect for all. They quoted Jesus as saying, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Those that steal my work and plagiarize it. All of them, the establishments, the Matt Wancocks, all of them. Peace and love. I don't hate you. I pity the fool. I pity the fool in the way, in the words of B.A. Baracus. All right. Um, uh, love your enemy and pray for those who indeed persecute you Luke 6 27 blessed are the cheesemaker peace me peacemakers big nose um, for they shall be called the sons of God all right um, Jesus was a son of God you are all the sons and daughters of God you are the peacemakers the uh, United Nations and foreign war policies are the peace keepers and they keep peace by bombing the bejesus out of countries with bombs and weapons of mass destruction and claiming wars and the rockets and missiles we are the peacemakers the truth is sovereign we gave the queen sovereignty i've got lots of things to prove to you that we are number one we're not sovereign citizens all right you are number one we are all in the image of i and my father are one the universal father all families are included in this okay so to shut down, I hope that shuts up any self-doubt that you may have and all colours, creeds, races, sects, countries, continents and nations are invited to come and chat with us and if you join our trust and you do what we uh, inform you is possible to do then you can have your own republic in your own nation and you can be um, forming your own trust which is linked to our master trust and we can get this to, you know, across the lands. I continue on blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God Matthew 5 9 do not use force against an evil man the rule of law is governed by the force of law the force of law is governed by the ministerial code the ministerial code is governed by international remits itself but it's called the, the police force and the force of law we would never use force we don't think force is is, is honorable at all man should never be forced to do anything but I say to you do not resist the one who is evil but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek turn to him the other also Matthew five thirty nine. let me just check that do not use force against an evil man but I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. That's what I've put. It, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him, the other also. Thank you, a thousand thanks. Thank you, a thousand thanks. It's hard that I recently said to somebody today, the other day, it takes a bigger man to walk away um, from a fight. Brother Brian from Tactical Sovereignty trying to goad me. That's what I'm talking to Brian from Tactical Sovereignty. And I know you watch my videos and you are one of those unconscionable ones. Hello, Brian, from Tactical Sovereignty, whose group I've left, whose post I've removed, whose uh, jibes I will not lower myself into. I say to you, a thousand thanks, a thousand thanks. Matthew 5.39, do not resist evil with evil. Luke 6.37, he who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. Matthew 26.52. So let's see how much work I'll put into this post for you, look, and data of Anabaptisms, Anabaptisms in England, where they come from, the belief, the history, the heritage, books of references, articulate points of reference. The source is, is, is um, here, I believe. Yeah, all right, and then I move on again. Do a Baptist, spring from Anabaptist seed, baptized. You're all becoming baptized again in a different way in your and maturity you're reaching the age of majority you're learning to deal with things see things look at your data self baptism uh, questioning all of the houses of God all right look how much data we've got in here that's the end of that post 
and we've got Anabaptism from, from Neo Latin, Anabaptista from the Greek. Um, I cannot pronounce that Greek word there, but Greeks in the house. And um, another bit there. German, Kalfa, earlier as a wider Kalfa, is a Christian movement which traces. So we get the idea where I'm coming from, and we go like this. More breakdown of it. It's an interesting area, it's inspired me. All right, very much so. This is all the data I've got for you to compare to here. Origins, theories, polygenesis, history. All right, a good job screenshotting that. Come and see us. We do it. We do it big. We don't do things small. We like data. And I'm getting to the end. I'm going to skim through the comments. I'm in the office tomorrow. I'll be getting in touch with you tomorrow regarding contact, telegram, emails, notifications. The ones that try to goad me, such as Brian from Tactical Sovereignty. I've not got time for you. Can't be entertaining you. That's that. All right. What? Um, where would you go if you're a member of SPLs? You go here. Am I in the chat still? that I do believe I'm still in the chat let me just do that if you're interested in that data and you're a supporter of the uh, private domain I'll put the link in for you now if you want to reference that you can only get that if you're with us so there you go there's no harm in me doing that and I've got another forum which is I'll share that with you now if you're with us where this is coming from the Disciples of Christ, I think it's called, bear with me. The Disciples are Christ, our witnesses born and birth. So I'm going to just skim through to uh, get to the bit where I am, needing to be. Romans 2.11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Romans 2.11, so what I've read, read out to you in some of this document today um, is found here, all right? Read all that out. Acts, God is no respecter of persons. And we put during a television interview, the well known American evangelist, Dr. Billy Graham. You know, this is all here, what I've read out to you that I wasn't going to read before. Um, Christ welcomes all. When I said all are included, and when I got the idea and inspiration from um, the universal non sectarian remedy for all, where man claims all the world's resources, common heritage for ourselves again, gets equitable relief remedy within the mineral and energy reserves of the realm this is the post there where it's part of this book here as well for you all right put that in the chat that can go right um, let me go to home greg's done some tweaks it's looking rather nice thank you to g star for the little cosmetic tweaks you've put in so you click to become a supporter check the links in the video come and visit us I've now started to uh, write to uh, my private self as David hyphen colon David hyphen J A E hyphen S O N N E hyphen Jeremita. So I've um, recently changed it again. Continuous evolution of position. So that's me who's speaking now. I'm the governor of this uh, domain and trust, and my legal person is uh, J A S O N. Or Jason so I've got uh, I'm commonly known as this commonly known and I operate privately as this calling and uh, clan estate name but you'll see Jason is spelt slightly different my person's name is not the same as that so there's a clear distinction between man David and person David all right so that's why I've done that I'm not trying to go above anybody I have two um, status is a public status which is not me and I have a private status as we're talking about data and data opt-out and consent and everything like that so you understand inner stand and overstand all right that's um, where you download your last will and testament for free that we give you as part of your 12 credits and promises shekels that you give us okay that's housed there Cummings, Boris, about Matt Hancock, totally hopeless. These are some of the stories I've put up recently. What have I got to show you here? 
our children's social care system, 30 year old Tower of Jenga, everything's crumbling and um, it's going, you know, to the dogs, literally. So the reasons for self-governance, the reasons for um, doing what we're doing, the world's at a time, a crossroads of, you know, thought, consciousness, questions, truth, integrity, honour, and vote of no confidence. No, I wouldn't say a vote of no confidence. I'd say a complete loss of trust and um, a mick take. I'm going to swear a little bit. You might want to turn down the volume um, if there's any young bloods in the room. Pause the video. Complete piss take. All right, it's a shower of shit is what it is. Embezzlement, lining your friend's pockets, scandal after scandal, sports, politics, religion, monarchy and banking. It's why we're getting out and we're going to pr protect our unborn lineage from what the Ch Mr. Chancellor of the Exchequer is doing, Mr. Rishi Sunak, and how he's going to put in thousands of millions of hundreds of thousands of millions of uh, young souls into debt, you know, um, via this uh, registration. Reggie, Regis, you look at the Sovereign Masters Guild um, from the library, you select library, we've got resource library. You, this is the first place you would go to to get um, frequented with our terminology and um, you download this bundle here the 2021 um, 10 megabytes it, it's in there um, civil judicial template for justice excuse me and you've got the uh, CQV quasi trust principle of trust law master servant so your three um, documents there then we've got UK officer agent interaction and then we got a document myself and Greg did called um, shadow um, shadow contracts me and Greg quite a few of us did those latter two I mostly did those and put them first three together so um, Regis um, Regis registration Regis uh, look at that word in itself and tration as Andy pointed out on the open public chat on telegram the other, other night tration to give away something which is most precious so regis queen and monarchy tration give away something most precious registration um we go to library again and you've got your resource library table view all right so if you don't want to look at it one by one and search and use the tags there you'd come here and you can see green for new files the dates size the downloads and you can scroll through page by page and then it's um, if you're looking for something or you're just curious we'll then go for to check something physicians warranty of vaccine safety that's particularly interesting for you to consider as well I'm just checking for that document and um, what Kevin did data mysterial codes there that's interesting for you to look at. Does the Vatican own thy soul? Repentance in sin and the potter and the carpenter. I'm getting excellent feedback about that. There are videos on Indiglo entitled that. I suggest you check them out or you actually, if you're in and you join us and you support them, you look at these three as well. Get um, some more um, inner over understanding about what I'm going on about. Egyptian Book of Thoth, Egyptian Tarot, Babylonian Talmud. Ecclesiastical deed poll. Not so much a fan of this because this is to do with Templar law, canons, and Vatican, and certain things. We've found other ways to do the same thing via um, the evidence of life, essence, incarnation. But if you deem an ecclesiastical deed poll to be uh, the way, then we give you that to consider, and that's why it says review only. A proclamation of sovereignty, part two, V. Calactus, version one, part of the uh, merit level, silver enhanced the uh, course that your workshop guideline we're going on now all right more uh, references for duns theological bible ecclesiastical dictionary a proclamation of sovereignty explained version five i'm going to remove that uh, it's had nearly 200 downloads but this one replaces it the more later the publication release upload date the more relevant it will be for you it appears it isn't. I am surprised about that. All right. Papers Corpus Act 1679. 
kind of relevant but with what we've got we're not really reliant upon these kind of like I say when we use legislation and we use it to our advantage then we cannot mix equity with um, common laws common legislative laws these are common laws the common law is that it comes out of Westminster which is mandated upon your person by default presumption and assumption then you've got the Ten Commandments which are biblical common laws which are the social governances of community and then we have England and Wales laws um, you know and uh, it, you have to separate you sovereigns think you don't have to follow the law well which law might you actually be on about there COVID-19 conditional acceptance Oh, I've got something else to show you that I need to show you. Actually, get this one. One second, important, forgotten about. I believe. Too many things on. No. Yeah. there's no legislation for exemption at the moment for covid exemption covid virus vaccine i just this up for you what david's done um i was on a telephone call with the nurses had a telephone call with the doctor and i've asked due to my medical conditions and my family should i say not mine would, would it be sensible to accept the text message invitations that I'm getting through the doctors um, and the surgeries at the moment or should I sit back and wait for further information so here we go they don't um, you know, have the legislation in place for exemptions they're only giving out pa um, vaccine passports for those that have had this experimental vaccine um, which is approved but not licensed so on the 22nd of June I wrote I require the following Monday the 10th of May at 9.35 a.m. this year, 2021, I received a call from doctor after speaking to the practice's nurse on Friday the 7th of May at 11.13 a.m. Since then, I have called the 119 telephone service and spoken, spoken, spaketh, spoken to some agents who took my calls who have directed myself back to this practice and said I need to request a formal letter from doctor and the practice outlining the below as there is no current legislation regarding exemption proofs for not being medically suitable to accept or have the COVID-19 vaccine administered there is only legislation for a COVID-19 passport once one has received the vaccine the details are as thus on Monday the 10th of May 9.35 a.m. via a telephone call doctor informed me that he was unable in his professional capacity as a doctor to assure myself that accepting the offer of a COVID-19 vaccine was a safe and reasonable action to commit at this time due to my concerns about my medical and biological conditions. There is a history of angina and varicose veins in my family's genealogy. I have conditionally accepted there is an offer made to myself via the health department and the NHS Trust of England and then via text messages I'm not going to talk about Matt Hanker inviting me to volunteer for a vaccination administered by your practice and surgery the offer has been conditionally accepted as doctor I'm going to say his name it's just his ex is there inferred that I would need to obtain further validated information regarding the safety and benefits of accepting this offer I am aware of the possible varied and low risk side effects, albeit, you know, one of them is death. That's not in here, but I've put, I am aware of the possible varied and low risk side effects of taking this non-licensed and experimental injection of a substance slash product known as COVID-19 vaccination. The call was recorded and a transcript can be made if avail available if necessary. I require proof from the practice and surgery of the above direction as to ensure my fundamental human rights to work and roam and to travel freely and unhindered are upheld and to prove that I am at this time not a suitable candidate for this COVID-19 vaccination 
thank you and God bless you all autographed by so when I asked for surgery for proof of the for a certificate when I asked 119 where's my exemption passport they said there isn't one 119 said to me David there is no legislation for exempt members of the community there is only a passport to green light anybody or travel and work and um, social aspects of life once they've had the vaccination I said well that's not very fair is it they've only done half a job as far as I can see of course there's going to be members of the society and community that aren't eligible to have the vaccine for medical reasons and it just logic would dictate that when you're going the government writing legislation for covid vaccine and passports there we should actually have you know one for the exempt but that thought didn't occur it's not in legislation so I'm looking for the scribes on Indy to uh, talk with me about this I'm going to download this and set this for the premiere for tomorrow because I'm live on the dot com a private cast with Rosie Kelvin later Kelvinius Maximus the first so um, I'll be interested in the comments on the feed here and forgive me if I don't go through all your comments I'm going to premiere this on Indy after I've downloaded it from here and um, we will have a premiere and discuss this and I'll review it um, with you and talk with you further about that but if you check there is no legislation I've had it from the horse's mouth so for me to, to circumnavigate and find a workaround and I'll put it on the practice and whatever they give me it's going to take 10 weeks for them to action this from the 22nd of the 6th so when I showed you the proof of service earlier and um, I said one was for the data issue and non-sharing and one was for the medical requirement that um, what I showed you earlier that um, might pop up on the screen I might need to uh, change just capture one minute yeah I will one second one thing at a time one thing at a time don't rush me scribes I'm learning to ride a bike again once the systems have had an update. Okay. Might be that, yeah. <clears throat> and I said I'd given um, the doctors two items, and one was for data non compliance, and one was for um, proof of. So that's what that little uh, imagery receipt is there for. So I've got 10 weeks from the date of the 22nd of June to wait for my uh, GP to give me. The uh, COVID exemption, all right. I think marvelous. How it happens fast? Ten weeks. When you get you're waiting for me, Kevin. Answer email, Telegram, etc. If it gets you in, I would hope so. Generally, the two and a half months. We're not that far behind, so we're doing quite well to say we're on a shoestring. We desperately need donations and help and support benefactors. Um, looking to get some land. To actually establish the uh, sovereign republic of new britain and the um uh, well, allied sovereign states of being so um can help us out we need help and we'd like um, you to consider supporting us before i go to the chat room and quickly skim that and i do need the little boys room as well i'd like to look at and say you go to uh Indiglo, Oh, SPL's Pro, so can I do this? I believe I can without breaking the system. That's the backup channel we're on now for those that are watching on Indie on the replay. Here's the uh, Indie homepage. If you go to community, if you're not interested in videos and playlists and you want to get updates on what I'm doing. That's what I've shared on Indy. We are live an hour ago. This video we're on now. That's your uh, bit of scandal sleaze by Matt Hancock. Hey Deacon. That's the letter an hours ago of resignation from Matt uh, Wanksock. <laughs> and um, that's the second chat we should have been having with um, Vice TV brother Chris. He's cancelled that, so we will get there. Roundtable discussion with David and Kelvin. TB News. Freedom protest in London the other day. 
these plans, but it let me. They were quite funny to find. Got the politicians on minimum wage, close down their business, deny them healthcare, isolate them, and watch how fast things change. We got 20 odd likes on that. Interesting uh, iconography. Saving lives, shagging wives. I hate that man. I know they're all as bad as each other. Yeah. And there'll be another one put in that's just as bad, but so, you know, um, some are just entirely unpalatable and just to look at winds you up, whereas others are more um, tolerable. What happened here? Is this real or what? I always wondered about this man. This was taken from Facebook, it was posted. Let's do it properly so I can show you. Show you what's going on. Shut down. And bearing in mind, I'm thinking of the replay as well. So when you click on the home page, the blue F, and you go here, it takes you directly into spspro.com, which is our public um, Facebook trust. I've corrected that. The crown owns your name. That was an interesting thing to correct, but I'm moving on. No time for that. It's dragged on long enough, but. Um, not dragged on. I need a wig, basically, is what I'm thinking. My mind's another place. Post from Brother Kelvin there. <laughs> that Hancock resigns to spend some more time with someone else's family. <laughs> oh, someone's. Uh, yeah, that's what we put in SPLs as well. Mr. Karen. We promote her channel, we let her promote some stuff she does. Happy to have you, Karen. Thank you for that. Well, I'm not healing your hangover. But you turn the water into wine. Excellent, Kevin. Let's have a look at some of the we've got going on. Going around long time. That's interesting. Don't know about that. Slow. That's brilliant. The latest video from last night. Policeman getting snickered. Good picture for me and Kevin there. Did well. Thank you, Chris, for that. Oh, where did he get? Just the rhymes. Awakening cheat too. <laughs> Was it, yeah? I've seen it. I was just doing this, just scrolling through. There we go. So Aaron Sexton is requesting help in community help. Has anybody seen this man, Steve McRae, Bincham, also known as Steve McRae? If anybody knows his whereabouts, please get in touch as one is rather concerned about his mental well-being. There, I just enlarged it. Well, I did. One second. Sorry for the eye strain. I was quite shocked to see this, more shocked than you might actually give credit. Um, so if any of my friends up north come across this man, please get in contact with me. Last seen in the Glasgow area. He could be anywhere with this state of mind. All my Facebook friends completion, please share this. It doesn't read, that does say what it says. Could be anywhere with this state of mind. If all my Facebook friends completion, please share this. Where it came from, and I was like, "Whoa, okay then." So Stephen's not looking too well, and Aaron's got some in community help. So I clicked to that. I thought we'll do we'll do exactly what what it says on tin. I went to that group there. That shocked me more than it, you, you might give it credit for. He put the post there. So anybody on the replay or in the chat room. Aaron Sexton Facebook's looking for him. I'm going to keep the rest of them. I'm going to be reserved in light of what that is and how bad he looks. You know, people have mentioned things about £5,000 and trusts and, you know, um, Simon, aka Dawson, Docker Dawson, aka Simon Dawson, aka Docker Dawson, claim to have access to the TBA accounts from Brother Stephen. So if he has got that, I would say that Simon Dawson is the perfect man to invest his. Uh, 
this funds of which he's got through Stephen getting Naomi's access to the TDA Treasury Direct etc and he could put as much money as he wants into it unless that isn't quite the case I don't know yeah I'll look at bribes go to live chat I'll give you a shout out and I'll say thank you um, I'm very very much needing the toilet I'll share something else we'll capture and FPLs and then I can uh, look at the comments. Bit of luck. Alright, well, alright then, one minute. It won't, it will only take the active window. The active window, one second then. I'm gonna see your comments in a minute. Maybe I do this. I need to get something in there, don't I? Might do that. Might do that one. I'm sure. Yeah, goodbye message. Comments number get in off. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your company. I hope you've been enlightened. I hope you've been entertained. I hope I haven't offended you. I said it with love and light. I mean what I say. And I am a hermeticist primarily. We use awful ways out. As is way you know and we told you why we do that because it's based on that book there we recognize the way out we put full armor on don't we Jay you're in the chat I do believe I saw your name earlier <laughs> right then Claire, Kathy, Tony volume really low for me okay maybe it is I'll uh, make a note of that. I'll go a bit closer to the mic after the presentation. I'll set my settings out, but it's telling me the good in the yellow. Oh, it's turned down a bit. You're right there. Minus 11 decibels. I've seen that earlier. All right. Thanks, Barn. <laughs> Get it turned up. Gansters. Merlin's assistant Amanda. <laughs> Great screen name. That is one of the best yet. All my fave girls on chat. There's such a ladies man. Anders keeps great company from Lisa. Hello sister. Lisa, hello to the family for me. Hope all's well. There you are. Please concentrate on David girl. <laughs> I love you. You are the best. Such humour. You put without UK i.e. offshore but am I right to say Great Britain is not a country without UK Great Britain is not a country Great Britain the United Kingdom of Great Britain is not a country it's a UK UK is a paper-based format Great Britain is a landmass you'll have to uh, wait another time we'll get into that what a great gift from brother David thank you Gansters. I got that form and signed it by autograph all rights reserved in red I completed the form in red in lowercase. I only have red pens in my car now. That'll do, Tony. That'll ding dang do. A man that knows, a man that can and knows what to do. Bosh. David must have been Hippocrates as a distant relative. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> no, I have got Greek, Italian, Irish, English lineage, and um, I um, I have been to Hippocrates' um, house and villa and aware. Um, I am aware where he was, where he lived, and. Uh, etc so 
Um, yes, I um, I do admire that man. Uh, not totally everything, but let uh, food be your medicine and medicine be your food when we was herbalists once upon a time ago. Share this video, please. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. Well said, gangsters. Nothing hypocritic about David. No hypocrite, that's right. Doctor of ethics with or without tooth. Yes, I come to you as I am today. So I put it in now and again. Mostly I put it in, but still need it doing. I'm not uh, using anything that isn't mine to get it done. It's hundreds of pounds. I'll wait and get it done properly. And um, it's not the biggest of things going off at the minute, considering, but uh, so toothless pirate wannabe. Such a treasure trove of valuable information. We are fortunate to have this to our avail from the unselfish generosity of David and Kevin. Bosh, that's right, that's what we do. The sacred contract. And um, we give not to receive, but to uh, make you stronger so you can roll with us. Bit Izen. Tom Middleton. Why aren't you blue? I don't think you can make you blue, can I? Add moderator. Welcome to the Blue Man Group, John. I am the universe. We are masters of the universe. Fulcrum is the most important part of the Alaskan teen boys did some crimes, were charged, tried, but not by legal court, but by native justice tribal court. They were sentenced to survive on a remote, uninhabited island for a lengthy time. Now then, now then that's proper law. I like that. Thanks for sharing. Please uh, say hello to James for me and the fam, like I say, and uh, blessings be. Hope all is well. Great little bit of information to share. Proper law. Do unto others, you want done unto yourself. Okay, let's make you blue. And cock cupboard, kissing is a complete sham. Can't quite work it out. Okay, he and she went into a place with a camera for a smooch. He probably didn't see Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, well, I wonder if he gets a fine. He should definitely get a fine. He should definitely get an enforced fine. Boris will be giving him a pat on the back because Boris has, uh, you know, done the same. Uh, they're all in the same club. Infidelity. Tony, now, much love. Full armor is there. I love it when you say that. Proper bow. Nice one. Thank you. Bless up. We're ending now. I'm going to the little boy's room and this will be replayed. An indigo for all those that aren't here now that will be there later. Bless up, thank you. Pretty soon, don't forget to check out the links in the video for support where we live, public telegram chat.